Hi friends, this is Fezan Kagdi and I welcome you all to a lecture series of machine tool design. Now, this subject is come, comes under the category of a design domain, which means it is related to a design of machine tools. Okay, that is a machine which you have already studied during your manufacturing process. That is various types of machines such as lathe machine, drilling machines, milling machine, grinding machine, shaping machines, right? So, and you also know the functions of all these machines. That is milling machine is used for jaw manufacturing, right? Then lathe machines, on lathe machine we can do a turning operation, facing operation, as well as thread cutting operation, taper turning operations. And even you know the drive of these machines, you have a basic overview of that, that an electric motor is going to supply mechanical power to these machines. And within these machines, uh, there is a gear drive or either we can say it could be run by a belt drive. Okay, now our target is what we need to focus in this subject is that we are going to design the structures, the components of these machine tools. Okay, so first of all, uh, I am giving an introduction that what is design. So we would say that design means it makes use of uh, imagination. Okay, scientific methods and engineering principles to obtain or to com or to generate a component in a most economical way okay now the main aim of studying this subject is to obtain a accuracy of a workpiece that is we would say a job or a machine component which is produced by a particular machine tool that could be a lathe machine or a drilling machine or a milling machine hence we are more concerned that a machine tool should be subjected to less amount of deflection now how this aim of achieving the accuracy can be obtained okay how we can achieve this aim so we can say that we can do that by reducing the machining time right that is a time which is required to produce a component okay now how we can do that so we can do that by increasing a cutting speed and feed rates right even uh, we need to provide a machine tool uh, in such a manner that it should adopt a future development. For example, a numeric controlled machine tool should have a provision that in future it could be converted into a computerized numeric control machine tool. Okay, this is just an example. Now what else we can do? So we can even use multiple tools to provide a cutting operation on a same workpiece, right? So this all can reduce the machining time. Second is a non-productive time that also we can reduce that is a non-productive time basically involves a loading and unloading of a workpiece similarly loading and unloading of a cutting tool on a tool post right even uh, we need to move a tool to uh, be, uh, before commencing the cutting operation right to a particular position by uh, rotating the hand wheel okay so this all comes under a category of a non-productive time in which we are not doing any work on a workpiece on a machine a machine component right we are just arranging the cutting tool and a workpiece so this is also time which is wasted right so this can be uh, this can also be overcome by designing a machine tool in a proper manner along with this we can even improve the geometrical accuracy of a machine tool okay by designing uh, now what does this mean so we can say that geometrical accuracy means the structure uh, that is we would say uh, we can take an example of a guide wheel okay that has been formed on a machine bed okay that is a rail type portion so it has it has to be uh, designed in such a manner that whenever uh, the sliding member moves on a slide uh, guide ways then there should be no jerk or produced okay no vibration produced so that it can perform a uniform motion so this can only be achieved if there is a geometrical accuracy of that particular component that is guide wheels right similarly we can achieve a kinematic accuracy now this is related to a gearbox that is there should be a minimum number of gears provided on an output shaft okay in order to reduce the fluctuations in load that is a thrust load is also exerted on a spindle right axial load that is that is axial load and uh, radial load so thrust load is basically axial load. So these all parameters we are going to control by designing a machine tool. Okay guys, so I hope that you are clear with the concept of machine tool. Now let us move further. Let us understand a basic overview. That is what is a machine tool. So we can say that 
The machine tool is defined as a machine that imparts the required shape and size to the workpiece with a desired accuracy. How? So we would say by removing metal from a workpiece in form of chips. Okay. Now how, how it is going to do? There must be some device, right? That is a cutting tool will be used to perform this task. Okay. So with the help of a wedged shape device that is called a cutting tool. Okay, now the next step is mechanism. So mechanism is used to transfer or transform motion from an input source to the output element. So remember, the only the function of mechanism is only to transfer a motion. Uh, for example, you can even say it is going to convert a rotary motion into a reciprocating motion. You can consider the case of a slider crank mechanism, right? Uh, rocker and arm, uh, rocker, <coughs> rocker and crank mechanism right then cam and follower mechanism so all these come under the category of a mechanism in which a motion is only transmitted whereas we can say a machine is a combination of all the mechanisms okay which is used uh, which is used to transfer or to utilize the energy at the output operative member okay now this operative member could be anything it could be a bed to which a motion has to be transmitted, let's say a reciprocating motion. It could be a cutting tool of a shaping machine, right? A motion has to be transmitted. So that uh, that member is called an operative member. Okay. Now the purpose of a machine tool can be summarized as to produce a surface, to dress formed curves, to provide a finish to a given surface. So these points are very obvious. Okay. So remember, I have shown a flow diagram that is mechanism transfers or transform motion, whereas machine transfers or transform energy okay so i have shown a diagram of two machines that is one is a lathe machine another one is a drilling machine you can clear this thing. okay so i hope that you are clear with machine tool okay now let's proceed further now over here we are going to see classification of machine tools so the first and foremost classification is by the degree of automation Okay, so we can say from that point of view, we have a machine tools with manual control in which a operator or a worker is required to perform all the tasks. That is from starting a spindle to arranging a tool at before commencement of a cutting. That is by making use of a tool post, by making use of a hand wheel to move a uh, saddle, we can say that, right? So all this task in, in on a machine tool is performed by a operator itself. Machine is not going to uh, do, uh, we can say machine is not going to take a particular position by itself. Okay, it has, it can only be done by operator. Second, semi-automatic machine tool. Now in this type of a machine tool, we can say that up to certain degree, uh, automation has been provided. Uh, we can take an example of a numerically controlled machine in which uh, operator has to fit the data. Okay, it cannot take by itself and then uh, the dry motion that is a primary cutting motion is automatically set by a cut, uh, automatically set by a machine a particular position of a tool can be arranged that is auxiliary motion can also be performed by a machine itself. Okay, so this comes under a category of a semi automatic machine tools uh, you will get to know what is auxiliary motion and what is a primary cutting motion. Okay, in a subsequent lectures. Okay, now next is a automatic machine tools which means a CNC machine tools we can say computerized numeric control of totally automatic machine tool all the tasks are performed by machine tool itself there is a drive motion that is our primary cutting motion feed motion as well as the auxiliary motions are performed by a automatic machine tool so this was a classification based on a degree of automation now next by weight so we can even uh, we can obviously say that uh, one type would be a light duty machine tools weighing up to one ton that is thousand kg okay second type medium duty machine tools weighing up to 10 tons and last type that is heavy duty machine tools weighing up uh, weighing greater than 10 tons okay and next uh, type of classification that is by degree of specialization okay so by degree of specialization means a type of general purpose machine tools then we can say a single purpose machine tool and production machine tools okay so let us see that in case of a general purpose machine tools, we can say it can perform all the metal cutting operations with within their ranges. For example, a lathe machine is a general purpose. All the operations can be performed facing, threading, all the uh, turning operations, stepper turning operations, right? Then drilling machine, again, uh, in this we are going to provide a rotational motion to a drill bit and a workpiece will be kept uh, stationary, right? 
Even this drilling operation can be performed on our lathe machine in which we can provide a rotational motion to a workpiece and a drill bit will be fed into the cutting tool. At that time a drill bit will be stationary. Okay, so a drilling operation can be performed. Uh, vice versa is also possible that is providing a motion to a work, uh, providing motion to a cutting tool and workpiece is kept stationary. Similarly, milling machine, again it is a general purpose machine tool, we can say that uh, various sizes of gears can be produced on this machine. And boring machine, again it is uh, its purpose is to produce hole inside of workplace. Okay, now next one is a production machine tool, as the name, as the name itself suggests that production machine tool which means a large quantity of a components can be produced on this type of machine tool in a, a shorter period of time. In this case, the machining time can be reduced drastically okay so how so we can say that it is going to uh, it is provided with a special accessories or multiple tools which are employed on a workpiece to perform a cutting operation so ex example are very obvious that is multiple tool lathe right then we can say capstan and turret lathes that is on uh, on which a hexagonal turret is provided we can mount multiple tools on there so all these types of machine tools comes under a category of a production machine tools okay even multi head drilling machine so multi head drilling machine you can see i have shown a figure of that a picture is shown in which a multiple drill bits you can see connected to the same uh, we, uh, we would say so connected to the same head okay so simultaneous operations can be performed so this comes under a category of a production machine tool. now next type is a spatial or a single purpose machine tool. Now as the name itself suggests that on this type of machine tool only a single type of a component can be produced a single purpose right a special purpose. So this can perform single operation on a workpiece of a particular shape and size. So for example we can say a gear generator okay piston turning lathes. So in, in this case we can say that only a piston of a definite shape and size can be machined a finishing operation can be performed on that particular uh, dimension piston only okay so this comes under category of, category of a single purpose even a camshaft grinder which means a grinding machine on which only a camshaft of a definite shape and size can be uh, uh, can be machined okay or uh, cutting operations can be performed on this type of component of a definite shape okay now let us see further next we need to see a constructional and operational features of a machine tool so these are as under under you can see the first requirement of a machine tool is a supporting frame which must be there then bed or a column or a knee next it must have workpiece holding device okay we know several types of workpiece holding device are available that is we have a three jaw chuck right four jaw chuck then we have mandrills to hold a hollow cylindrical uh, workpiece right we even have a centers we even ho have a collet right jigs and fixtures are also provided so these all features must be provided on our machine too next we need, uh, we need a, obviously we need a source of power that is our electric motor must be there so that it could run a machine tool these are all the power absorbing device so for that we need to supply mechanical power so source of power that is transmission system has to be provided okay next is arrangement for holding or mounting of a cutting tool so obviously we uh, even need a uh, tool holding device okay tool post is provided right uh, on which uh, on uh, which is provided on a saddle right we can move that by means of a hand wheel we can move a tool post by means of a hand wheel okay and last uh, we need a transmission system for a field motion so specifically we can say a gearbox arrangement has to be provided for performing the primary cutting motion as well as the auxiliary motions okay now let us discuss about a syllabus which we are going to study uh, the detailed introduction i have already given you during our live session so this is just our quick overview okay the gtu teaching scheme as you can see on your screen uh, the lectures per week would be three lectures okay practicals in that week would be two practical sessions okay so total five lectures there could be and credit so the credit of this subject is four now theory marks if we talk about that and semester examination uh, that the gtu is going to take place out of 70 and we know our mid semester exam is of 30 marks okay 
practical marks. So we can say answer national examination practical exam would be of 30 marks and personal assistance we can say uh, internal type that would be of a 20 marks. So total in, in that we would say assignment will be provided to you. Okay, so this all total uh, uh, for this subject is 150 marks. Okay, now let us see our syllabus. So as you can see, uh, we have already discussed this in detail. I have already introduced. So let's quickly see all the uh, chapters. So chapter number one is our introduction to machine tool drives. In this chapter, you are going to study how to calculate a machining time. Okay, various operations. Then you are going to study about the drives. Then we are going to study about auxiliary motions, cutting motions or various types of rotor, how, how a rotary motion is converted into a reciprocating motion. Okay, along with that we are also going to see the mechanical components. For example, we are going to see a, a gears arrangements for gear, helical gear, their functions, right? So these all devices will be used to convert a rotary motion of an electric motor into a rotary motion of a machine tool spindle. Remember, but it could either step up the speed or step down the speed. Why? Because we know electric motor is going to run at a fixed definite speed, right? So for this purpose, we are going to use all these mechanical components that is that will be provided in our gearbox. Okay, then even we are going to see that how a, a rotary motion of an electric motor is converted into a translatory motion or we can say a reciprocating motion. So for example, slider crank mechanism, we are going to study that overview, okay, cam and follower mechanism. So this all comes under, under category of a mechanical drives that we will see in our chapter one. Similarly, uh, as I have discussed that hydraulic drives will be there in that we are going to study about uh, pumps, right? That is gear pump is there, van pump is there, which uh, are the purpose of pump, right? What is the purpose of pump? So we would say for conveying a liquid from one place to another place. Again, it is a power absorbing device. So electric motor is going to operate that pump. Then we are going to study various types of valve, ball valve, get, uh, uh, ball valve, globe valve, then throttle valves. Okay. Then we are going to see a direction control valve. This all comes, uh, comes under the category of a hydraulic drives okay and similarly electric drives means it comes in a category uh, it uh, in this we are going to study the selection of a electric motor okay Th uh, this is electric drives okay now the weightage is 10 percent from a video point of view as well as chapter number one will be included in your mid semester exam okay chapter number two is the regulation of speed and feed rates so basically this chapter is a design of our gearbox okay design of gearbox for a machine tools Okay, in this we are going to co uh, control our speed and feed rates which has to be provided to a machine tool. Even we are going to study the structure that how a compact gearbox can be achieved. We are going to design a compact gearbox on which uh, in which we, we, should, we should have a minimum number of gears on an output shaft. Then we can achieve a 6 speed gearbox, 9 speed gearbox, we will study a 12 speed gearbox. 16 speed gearbox okay how to achieve a construction a design of a gearbox along with this we will be uh, studying about arithmetic geometric harmonic and log logarithmic progressions uh, which will be used uh, to determine a distribution of a gear on each of the shaft inside a gearbox uh, and uh, we are going to use a ray diagram we are going to see what is ray diagram speed diagram speed charts okay so the uh, all these topics uh, will be covered and has a weightage of 25%. Okay, so now next chapter is our design of machine tool structure. So as we know that structure includes the various components that is bed, right? Then we could say column, okay, then saddle, tail stroke, okay, then carriage. So these are all comes under the category of a machine tool structure. So we are going to design a best possible structure considering the deflection point of view as well as we are going to see the rigidity and stiffness point okay in that we are going to see various derivations the the weightage of this chapter is 15 percent chapter number four is design of guideways and power screw so we know guideways is going to guide something right it is going to guide the sliding member that is carriage or a tail stroke so best possible design of a guideway has to be done to avoid to provide a static stiffness as well as a dynamic stiffness to the machine tool okay uh, that is in simple words i can say that we should not provide jerk or vibration to our remaining components okay so this will be included in our uh, design of guideways and power screw uh, you all know that power screw function is to convert 
the rotary motion into a translatory motion right uh, the simple example is for it is used for lifting the cars so the overall weightage of this chapter number 4 is 15 percent okay now next chapter is chapter number 5 that is design of spindles and spindle supports so in this we are going to see the function of spindles uh, now what is the requirement of spindle what the task of a spindle what else a spindle can do so we can say a spindle is a hollow component okay a machine shaft and, a, and it is hollow right uh, within that spindle we can provide a chuck various components like a chuck or a collet uh, we can even place a center for centering the workpiece and that spindle is mainly connected with our output shaft of a gearbox remember that so it is going to provide a mechanical power okay spindle is going to provide a mechanical power to our uh, workpiece or a cutting tool so the weightage of uh, this chapter is around 15 percent okay now next chapter that is chapter number six is the dynamics of machine tools again we are going to see in this chapter uh, we are we will be discussing about a static and dynamic stiffness of machine tool how vibration and a cutting forces can affect our machine tools and how we can avoid that okay so all this we are going to study in our chapter number six having a weightage of 10 percent okay next chapter is our control system of machine tools so even i have uh, given a detailed explanation on a control system of machine tools right so in uh, short i can say that control system is going to control the machining process remember going to control the machining process but how so by making use of a feedback mechanism that is by making use of a feedback device such as electric or a electronic servo motor okay or we can say a visual uh, even a operator can view that component that a specific task is performing or not so even that our eyes is also going to play a role of a feedback right so all these are included inside in a, in a control system we are going to study a control system for a speed and feed changing as well as adaptive control system now the weightage of this chapter is five percent and our last chapter that is chapter number eight is ergonomics and aesthetic considerations ergonomics means work laws it is a greek term ergo means work and nomics means laws so what work laws we need to follow uh, inside a workshop of a machine tools that a safety is provided to the worker as well as a safety is provided to our machine tools okay we need to follow certain work laws and we need to diff we need to design the components and a machine tool in such a manner that it does not cause injury to our worker okay so this all ergonomic considerations we are going to see in our chapter 8 in this we are also going to see that how a crank has to be a design how a hand wheel of a machine tool has to be designed okay uh, what is a possible or a best arrangement where we can place a hand wheel where we can place a push buttons right so all that we will see in our chapter number eight having a weightage of five percent okay guys so i hope that you are clear with our eight chapters and its weightage remember in our msc one mid semester exam one we are going to keep chapter number one chapter number two and chapter number seven okay let's move further recommended books as i have discussed that we are going to use a nk mehta by by tata magro is a public a publisher and it is used for GTU. Okay, so we, you you can rely on this textbook, but for chapter number two, that is design of gearbox, I am going to use machine system design by Fozard Hadri. Okay, uh, chapter uh, second book is our principle of machine tools by G C Sen and A Bhattacharya. You can even refer this machine tool book for control engine uh, control systems. Okay, but even that if you know, uh, uh, it is not required to purchase this second book. Just purchase the first one, that is N K Mehta. Uh, whatever is required from a second and third book i will provide you uh, in notes okay guys so i hope that you are clear in today's session in our next session we will start with our general requirements and working and auxiliary motions so till then stay tuned and thank you all